God helps men by making their name great. But your, your name being great is not the same thing as you being great. Your name being great is a perception of you while he trains you to quickly match up that level. Because it takes time to be great. If your name is greater than you, you are in trouble because proximity reveals flaws. The closer people come, they will see that you are not as great as that name. So he gives you a great name. He projects a great identity about you so that people come to you with honor. And while they are celebrating that name, he says, let's walk. Let's deal with this. So that by the time the nations come, you have been formed. If you get carried away by a great name and you don't stay with the spirit, as people come closer, it becomes clear that you were walking on reserve. How did I get here? I'm teaching on the river, oh, river, river, river. Whose passion is tempting me? My God. Are we together? When he was blessing Abraham, he said, I will make your name great. Now, the advantage of having your name great is that others can ride on that name to be great. If you are great and your name is not great, your influence and your story dies with you. Are we together now? A good name is better to be desired than riches because a good name becomes a leverage. This is why Jesus gave us his name. He didn't just give us his life. He also gave us his name. He didn't say in my life they shall cast out demons he said in my name I know the lion I know the lamb I know the lion I know the lamb I believe in the lion I believe in the Lamb. I believe in the Lion. Shalabaka parado sabadia. Listen, for someone here, you've been itching for ministry, and God is saying, just calm down. Just because you are called does not mean you are sent. This is a prophetic word. When God calls you, he calls you to himself. Then he sends you to the nations. I don't doubt your call, but have you been sent? The Bible says he called them that they should be with him, then that he might send them. Because in being with him, the maker makes you. It's not only the heavens and the earth that he makes. He will furnish you. Saul becomes Paul. Abraham becomes Abraham. Sarai becomes Sarah. Are we together now? That making, he will purge your appetites. He will purge your desires. He will plant in you something you were not born with. And by the time he's done, occasionally in that training, he will allow you to go for industrial practice. So in the midst of that training, you will go for a meeting somewhere. You will see power like you have never seen. Then he says, return to class. It was just to show you, to encourage you. But many people immediately sign off their graduation after that first program. And the deception is that people don't know whether you are being trained or not. Once they see you, they say, come again. It is left for you to love your destiny enough to say I'm only on industrial training let me go back because there is a kind of river I want to flow Rina Simali Kapros Kabila Sobrandi Elena Sholagadi Balakosiata. Seven people. I'm seeing the number seven. I just saw light falling on those seven people. Sadabagabakatosiata. The Lord is calling you back to the place of making. You are made, but not enough. You are still under construction, not enough. You are Moses, but not yet the deliverer. You are David, but not yet my servant. 
I have found David, but I am still looking for my servant. The one that oil will come upon is not David, it's my servant. There is a journey from David until you become my servant. He's calling you. Listen, for many, please just help those under the anointing. Let's not be distracted. You see, there is no doubt that you are called. There is no doubt that the prophetic is there. But if you are really serious about effective witness, the key, we run in the kingdom by staying. We don't run by running. The secret of speed is to stay. The ability to stay is how we run. Why is God turning this meeting to a pastor's conference this morning? The capacity you have within the spirit is a degree to which a demand will be placed upon you. Hear me? Listen. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Why did Israel turn aside in the day of battle? Their strength was small. But there was a young boy. Where did he come from? The secret of David is where he came from. Not his family place. His place of training. Saul, don't belittle my size. In the wilderness, a lion came. There was no social media to announce it. But I tore it. I tore the bear. I know what to do. I didn't tear it by strength. I tore it by covenant. That is the basis of my defeating Goliath. And Goliath said, am I a dog that you come to me? He said, you come to me with your bows and your spears. But I come to you by a covenant. I was trained. I was furnished. Forged from the furnace of affliction. I have capacity to bring you down. That I will throw you down by the sling. And I will use your own sword to cut off your head. Hallelujah. It is true that he called you into the healing ministry but please make sure you stay before you start calling the sick to come out because there is no mercy for unfaithful servants he gave one five talent two talent one talent he gave them enough time to go and learn about investment the one with one talent would have learned from the guy with five but anger and resentment made him to leave it there and one time he came demanding stewardship you are called to the healing ministry don't produce any poster yet stay till he walks on you let a grace come from heaven upon your life that the day you call the sick with one manifestation of his power you will ride like the river the river rides with ease it clears everything before him the challenge with many believers is that our callings and our election is certain but we have not given diligence to make our callings and our election sure so there are many people wanting to do big things for God but the capacity is small you become a casualty on the journey to yourself and to all those who trust you the spirit for one minute no distraction go ahead Hallelujah. Please be seated for one minute. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Yes, we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. You see the Bible tells us that from age 12 the last thing we hear about Jesus was he was in the temple and that's the end of it 
where he went to what he did if you were in Jesus's generation one day you will ask him are you really a savior is it true that there is prophecy on your head because what are you doing from I thought you would start the ministry from 14 and he will tell you hang on there is something I'm doing you don't know what the cross is you do not understand the nature and the gravity of man's sin I know the nature of my assignment from age 12 the next 18 years we did not hear about Jesus the next time he shows up he comes to John's crusade and John is a prophet who had been trained to identify him do you know that baptism was a strategy by John to identify the Christ so he would pour water and look you are not the one go he would pour water and because a sign was given to him in his place of training and one time as soon as he looked he said behold I've seen him hold on he did not see the baby that was born he did not see the teenager he saw one who had built capacity did you hear that so there are times that a prophet can come a genuine prophet he will not see you as touching your call because that version was not given for him to see John did not see baby Jesus John did not see teenager Jesus he saw Jesus who had been trained and he said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and Jesus came why are you here I came to be ordained and he said no I'm not worthy based on what I've seen the capacity that I see in the spirit he said suffer it to be so that scripture may be fulfilled the Bible says he dipped it in water as soon as he came out there was a verdict from heaven this is my beloved son the question is what was he before he was a carpenter's son he was a baby but training brought him to a state this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased from that time three and a half years ministry and we've not recovered because if the axe head is blunt much energy will be exerted the reason why there is exertion of energy in evangelism exertion of energy in soul winning my god we have such laborers in the field and sometimes after one year with all due respect what what is the sickle some are even using their hands because they did not receive the sickle the sickle is given in training not at birth there are many people at the farm no sickle others are dead they don't even know the difference between wheat and tears because he said let them grow you must be trained to know they all look alike many have been cutting down everything because the ill training does not make them see that there is a difference between sickle i mean the wheat and the tears are we learning the inner work of transformation it is within that time of training god will teach you compassion to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity it is at that point he will teach you victory over satan you will be frustrated in that training till your ego is tongue and you will finally die in the year that king uzziah died then you now see there are things in the day that my pride died i saw the lord in the day my ego died in the day loss died trainings are times of death a great prophet like isaiah as great as he was he was already prophesying but he was on his own in chapter 6 while he was prophesying god was still saying who shall we send isaiah said so what have i been doing he said send me god would have said no no not you i mean the rest he said now come let's send you my god and yet conferences were still happening and heaven was still saying who shall we send and who shall go for us the first thing that happened to isaiah was that a life coal was taken and it was purged and it says your iniquity is taken from you you are not a false prophet but there is still iniquity in you you don't like what i'm teaching you invited me to teach on the, um, let the river flow what did you think i was going to talk about if you really want that river to flow this is how it flows so back to lagos what is the solution to the flood problem 
I believe the government is already working. They're digging, massive digging of drainages because the rain will come for sure. Am I right? And then the clearing of certain gutters and, and whilst you see them clearing it, they are clearing it and it is a beautiful thing with all due respect. When you go to developed nations and you see all kinds of rain but they have channeled it well and everything goes well. That vessel is you and I. This is not to condemn you but let me tell you the truth there is still a lot of work to be done in us Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 19 and 20 please give it to us we have to pray to know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God next verse it says now unto him mm, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think please finish the last line for me according to what so those possibilities are limited to the degree of his power that flows in us now when you go through that inner work of transformation i'm saying this because some of you that is the season where you are how i know is because god left you alone he took everybody away from you transformation and training is not done in the crowd he will isolate you there are things he will teach you and only you will understand is your covenant with him when that happens ladies and gentlemen at that point you are ready to be a witness then john 7 39 now happens you are filled when you are filled and you see the fullness of christ involves three dimensions of him maybe i should say that quickly when the bible talks about the fullness of christ there is a theological explanation number one the nature of christ his character number two the wisdom of christ number three the power of christ so every time you talk about the fullness of christ your mind should go to these three dimensions number one the nature the character of christ the fruit of the spirit number two the wisdom of christ are we together now what the bible calls the mind of christ and then number three the works of christ anybody who walks in these three dimensions is operating in the fullness of christ you can walk in the power of christ and not the nature of christ something will be wrong with that presentation you can walk in the wisdom of christ and not walk in the power of christ you can walk in the nature of christ and not walk in the power of christ but god desires witnesses who operate this threefold dimension and every problem you see in the church through history is because one dimension was ignored or one dimension we call it different names i'm not speaking in a pastor's conference but go and trace through bible history every time god was misrepresented one of these three components was found wanting either someone emphasized his wisdom at the expense of his nature no character or someone emphasized his nature and there was no power to validate his presence or someone contended for power and there was no wisdom to guide the administration of that power maybe this is a sermon for someone go back and teach your people that the fullness of christ is a representation a wholesome representation of his nature his wisdom and his power let's say it together his nature his wisdom show me a believer who is trained by the spirit to capture this i show you a mighty tool a mighty end time tool and i believe this is what god is doing even with conferences like this this is what god is doing through several vessels many of you here he is granting grace there are people who have been greatly aligned along the area of his nature others his wisdom others his power but what god is doing is he's bringing a synergy you can't say i understand his nature that means i stay there you will have great people with character but they will die of sickness they will not go forward they will not advance albeit you will see holiness and righteousness and purity then there are others you will see wisdom 
CEOs will come out professionals intellectuals but spiritually speaking one yoke from darkness will bring them down bring the business down because it says say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works it is through the greatness of thy power wisdom builds power retains so if the only thing you have to build is wisdom retainership is not there there will not be longevity of impact Are we learning? Let me tell you the truth. You can test your training with the Holy Spirit by checking these three indices I just mentioned. That's how you know it is God training you or it's a familiar spirit. If it is another spirit training you, and I'm not being sarcastic, you will never find this tripartite formation. Only the Spirit of God has capacity to build a, a believer in a wholesome way that captures character the nature of christ the wisdom of christ i say this with all due respect if you are a servant of the living god here may god grant us greater grace to be able to communicate this threefold dimension because our members will be a reflection of the degree or otherwise of our communicating this area none of these three should be emphasized above another this is a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. The nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the character of Christ. As we conclude this enlightening sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman, let the depth of knowledge shared today be a catalyst of your ongoing educational journey. Apply the principles of wisdom understanding and divine insight in your pursuit of knowledge remember ed education is not mainly about information but a transformation of the mind and spirit carry the touch of learning into your studies professions and daily life may you continually grow in wisdom and impart your spheres of influence positively go forth empowered to be a beacon of knowledge and light and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe so you can be the first to get our video god bless you see you in the next